Hi there, so today we're going to be importing RSS feeds using the feeds and XPath parser contributor modules into a clean Drupal 7 build. And we're going to use real world uh, data from a hobbyist website called Scalemates, who offer an RSS feed. So for those who are unaware of Scalemates, it's basically a website for collectors and builders of polystyrene kits, and there's a concept called a stash. And the stash will be the kits which a particular user, and, and this is me, uh, has in their collection or they wish to buy or they've bought and they've built. So the intention is to import the stash of a particular user, myself, into the Drupal website. And we're going to be importing uh, this data here. Okay. Now to achieve that, we're going to need a number of contributed modules adding to our clean Drupal build. And I'm assuming here that uh, you're all familiar with achieving that, enabling contributor modules. Uh, so you're going to need the feeds and the feed UI modules, which have dependencies of scheduler and CTOOLs. You're also going to need the feeds XPath parser, uh, field validation and the UI accompanying that, which has a dependency on token. And Nice to have in any Drupal build is the admin menu, so you can quickly navigate around. And also Path Auto, so you can have uh, neatly created URLs for each uh, item of content. And because we want to do an end-to-end -end test in this particular tutorial, we're going to use views to accomplish that. So also, if you want to follow this tutorial all the way through, uh, then ensure you've got that on your, your Drupal build. Okay. So if we now go to my cheat sheet, and assuming I have now uh, enabled all those modules I've just listed, uh, we need to create a content type uh, to hold the content which we're going to be retrieving from uh, Scalemates website. So to achieve that, we're going to go to content types, and content type, it's called Scalemates, turn a few things off. Okay, now we're going to add some fields to uh, to hold the data. And at this point, it's useful to have a look at what the RSS feed looks like. So this is what we get from Scalemates. And we'll see that there's a whole bunch of items going down the page. And each item has got a title, a link, a description, a whole bunch of other fields, including box art and stash status. It's going to be a little bit legworky to import all of those, to create all of those in our content types. So we're just going to limit it to title, link, description, box art, and status. So let's do that. We've already got the title. The body will map against description, so we've already got that. Now let's have a link. And then that's going to be text. We're going to say defaults all the way through. Now we're going to have the box art, which is an image. Again, defaults. And finally, we're going to have a stash status, which is text. Okay, so that's created. Uh, next, what we're going to do, we go to the cheat sheet. We're going to add a URL alias pattern to that so that when content is created, it's created in a nicely, uh, nice, neat, consistent format. So let's go to search and metadata, URL aliases patterns, and then we're going to have the URL of the format stash and then no title. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make one of our fields unique and that's absolutely important because if an item is deleted from my scalemate stash that that deletion has to be reflected on the drupal website and therefore we need a field within the content type which uh, identifies that uniqueness and that's why we uh, are using the field validation module so we're going to make the link field uh, unique so let's go back and go to structure Field validation, we're going to add some validation. I'm going to call it Scalmates Unique, I think. Oops. 
Mm. And it's going to be working on notice the type of the node and the bundle of course is scale mates. Field name is link. Column is value rather than format. And the validator is unique values. It's going to, the scope is going to be at the bundle level. And it requires a custom error which is going to be link must be unique. Okay, so we've now got uh, field validation uh, set up uh, to make a unique uh, field in our content type. Now the next activity is to create a feed processor content type. Now what this does is this triggers the uh, feed import. So let's create that. Structure content types uh, content type. Let's call it feed processor and again. We're just going to switch on the feed defaults here. Okay, so the next thing we can do is create the feed itself. So let's go to structure, feed importers, add importer, scale mates, create. Whole bunch of configuration on this particular screen, so I'm not going to go through each and every one in great detail only those settings which are important to what we're trying to achieve today. So for the settings, uh, the basic settings, we are going to want to attach it to the content type of the feed processor, which, like I said, triggers the import. The periodic import, well, we don't want it every 30 minutes. There's no point in thrashing the Scalemates website. So every one day is, more, is going to be more than adequate. And as for process in background, if you've got more than a few hundred items, it probably is worthwhile to do that so that the imports are batched. Uh, but for the sake of this particular demonstration, we're going to keep that unchecked. Okay, now the fetcher is HTTP fetcher and that stays as it is. The parser, now this is what we're going to change. So it's the default value is common syndication parser, but we're going to need the XPath XML parser to achieve what we need. So let's save that. And now what we can do is just double check that it says node processor, which is correct under the processor. The settings, we need to set the bundle, which is scale mates. And we need to be quite, quite careful with these values. So if a change is made to an item at scale mates that does need to be reflected on the Drupal website. So we need to update the existing nodes. If it doesn't exist anymore on the scale mates website, it needs to be deleted from the Drupal website because it's been deleted from the stash on scale mates. And finally, we need to add the mappings. So for each and every one of these, it's going to be an XPath parser source and it's going to map against uh, a field in the content type. So let's put the title in first. And then we're going to put in uh, the body. Okay. And then we're going to put in the uh, link. Uh, now, now the link is going to be our unique field, so we need to ensure that that is checked. And let's update that and save. We now need to add the box art URI for the image. And finally, we're going to need to add status. Okay. So all the fields which need to be mapped have been mapped and they're going to map against, let's just quickly remind you, uh, this XML here. Now we need to change the settings of the parser and the most crucial setting is the context. So if we go to the XML again, we'll see that the very, very top level with the RSS, then the child of RSS is 
channel and then the children of channel are the items so we need to ensure that that's what we put in the context so it's rss channel item title is going to map against title body is going to map against description the link is going to map against link the box art uri is going to map against SMI colon box art and the stash status is going to be this guy here which is SM colon stash status okay so that is now done so let's save uh, all the settings for the import have now been uh, introduced into the system. So if we look at our cheat sheet again, the next thing we need to do is to create a piece of content under the content type of feed processor, and this will trigger the import itself. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Add content feed processor. And we're going to call that scale its import. Now the URL is the URL of the RSS feed, so I've got that to hand. And that's this guy here. Now if you note at the end there's a parameter which is my user ID. So if you're following this at home and you want to uh, use your own user ID, then ensure that you change this particular value. Let's copy that. In addition, there are other URLs you can use such as a parameter at the end of stash or wishlist. Uh, if you wanted to filter the import, but as we're going to be doing the filtering in Drupal views, it makes sense to bring everything in to Drupal. So let's do that. Now, as soon as I click save, we're going to start the import process. And as I mentioned earlier, it's going to take a few seconds because there are over 200 items. So under normal circumstances, you'd probably want to batch this up but uh, we're just going to uh, sit tight for a few seconds and watch these importing. Okay, so the importing process is underway and we're almost halfway through. And now the import has finished and we can check how that's worked by going into content. And it's saying already that there's 219 items there, so it is looking good. And here we have it. So these are all the items which we've just imported and let's just pick one at random. Okay, so we can see here that we've got uh, the description, which is the body text. We've got the title, obviously. We've got a link back to the item on the Scalmates website. We've got the box art and we have got uh, the status too. So we've proven the, the concept and the, uh, the import has worked fine. So just so we've got a nice way of uh, exporting of displaying all this on the screen we're going to quickly create a Drupal view and we'll call it stash and we're going to show content of type scalemates and we're going to order by title we're going to show the full posts and maybe put 50 on a page what's Okay, so let's just change the display name to stash. And now what we want to do, we're going to add a second display, which is going to be a page. And this is going to reflect just the kits which have been completed. So this is where we're applying a filter. So let's change the name to completed and we're going to need to add a uh, filter criteria here we're just going to apply this to this particular page and we're going to look for the stash status field and we're going to say that if it contains the value completed 
then it should be on this URL. So there we have it. Uh, the uh, preview shows that there's just three items, which is absolutely correct. So let's now save the view. And if we go to stash, here we have all my items, which have been imported. And if we go to stash, completed, this is effectively a filter. And it's just those three items, which we've already identified. So we've done a complete end-to-end -end import of an RSS feed using XPath Parser and views to output the data on the Drupal website. So I hope it's been fun. I hope you've got something out of it. And if you have, then maybe step over to my uh, Twitter feed and say hello to me. So that's my handle there. And I'm Badzilla on Drupal.org. A few other links and personal information, piece of information for you there. Have a great day and enjoy Drupaling.